it made good life choices, but just to put a little bit of salt into any wound you have. It goes, screw you, here's my fingerprint. Hi guys, welcome or welcome back. Thanks so much for joining me yet again. Oh my goodness. This is part three, I think of maybe four. We might double into another one. We're going to be talking about, again, new tools that are useful for photographers. I mean, obviously, primarily we're going to talk about dogs because that's kind of what most people know us for, but all of these things can be implemented on basically anything at all. So today we're going to talk about the new remove tool in Photoshop. Now this tool, I don't call the remove tool. This tool, since the very start, I have called the sparkly tool. And the reason being is because this tool is signified by an icon that looks like a plaster with sparkly stuff next to it. I don't know what, I can't help putting different names to things but for me this is the sparkly tool so it is technically the remove tool you can find it over here near your healing tools so it sat right between the two it's the one with the sparkles okay it's the it's the sparkly tool so now that we know what I'm talking about when I refer to the sparkly tool I want to run through this tool's uses it's good points and also it's enormous weakness let's get into it Okay, so we're seeing here in Photoshop with this beautiful image taken in Maine in the US when I was teaching there. This is obviously Gina Saul's amazing dog. And this was shot around about, I don't know, like maybe half five in the morning, 6 a.m., somewhere around about that. So we're going to use this image because it has a leash that needs to be removed. And hopefully I'm going to illustrate the good and the bad points about this. I'm going to interrupt this video right now and feel free to skip past this if you really want to, to tell you about today's sponsor. The sponsor for today's video is That Talk Spot, aka us, uh, because... If you haven't heard, because you've never heard about me before or you live under a rock, essentially we have a membership platform called the MTOG Vault where we share long form content, full edit tutorials and a whole host of other stuff, as well as the members have a magazine, they have goal setting and accountability sessions, there is live Q&As and all sorts of other good stuff in there. I don't really like this feels icky to do. I don't like it. So I'm just going to finish that then we'll jump back into the tutorial. I'm so bad. (laughs) I'm so bad at selling myself. It's unreal. So jumping back into here, we have our sparkly tool and I personally prefer to use this tool with the remove after each stroke unchecked like so. So not like this, like this. So I like to use it like that. I like to sample only the layer that I'm working on for the most part. Um, And essentially we just want to make sure it's on the plus. So that's it. So I can change the size with my keyboard shortcuts. There are two amazing videos on keyboard shortcuts that I will go ahead and link above. It is well worth learning your keyboard shortcuts. Trust me. Efficiency is key. We have our remove tool and essentially it works very simply. Now, because I have remove after each stroke, unchecked. It means that when I want to actually action the removal with the sparkly tool, I have to hit the enter key on the keyboard. The benefit of that is that I can go through and make multiple different selections in different places. So if I was to essentially maybe make a couple of different selections over here, notice how it's not automatically running that removal right this second. It's sort of like waiting here. Like, do you need me? Do you need me yet? Do you need me? It means you can undo stuff, but then when you're happy, you just hit enter on the keyboard and that will go ahead and run that removal process. That's how you use the remove tool essentially in its most basic terms to remove stuff. It is incredible for eye bogeys with dogs. Like it really is, it's incredible for dust, for laying down new hairs where hairs did not exist. It's fantastic. Where it also excels is in leash removals. So there is a leash in this image. Essentially what I can do is I can go ahead and make a selection. Remember to have your brush slightly larger than the item you're wanting to remove, but not too large. Like size matters but not that much so do your first click with that unchecked and then go down the line a little bit and go ahead and hold the shift key down and then go ahead and click again it will draw a straight line between them all so it saves you from trying to have a still hand if you don't have a still hand when you get to the point where it crosses over something like this hair just run along through it it tends to make good life choices most of the time I probably stop around about here for this and then what I want to do is zoom in so we can see that this image is noisy I don't really care about that it was 
not sunrise yet. So um, when we have that selected, we take a quick check of it and then we go ahead and hit enter. So with enter running, that's going to go ahead and do um, its whole progress thing. And you can see where it's made good life choices and bad life choices. Check your removals. Please, please, please check your removals because you guys, you have to. It doesn't always make good choices. So we can use a larger brush and see if we can kind of cover up this area and, and see if it will make a good life choice from the data down here. And then now we see the biggest issue with this tool, and that is its fingerprint. I'm calling it the fingerprint because it is a, just a very easy, surefire way to tell if someone has used this specific tool on an image anywhere because the fingerprint comes out. So when you are using this tool, you will have instances where this fingerprint will appear. You have to correct that. This is an artifact on a file. This is an error. This is an, an editing issue. And so it's really good that this happened there. So yes, it corrected the flow of the line coming up. Yes, it did. It made good life choices. But just to add, put a little bit of salt into any wound you have, it goes, screw you, here's my fingerprint. Um, and so I, I don't know if people are calling it that, I think it should be called the fingerprint. These vertical hashed lines, which appear, hopefully you can see this, watch this in 4K if you're not already. You can see random noise, you can see random noise, and then you can see a really random set of straight lines and hashes. And although it doesn't seem like a lot, I can still see them here, I can still see them here, I can still see them here. I'm now at less than 100% zoom and I can still see this, which means that if you are entering your images into competition, the judges are going to see it, right? They're going to see mm, something's not right there and then they'll want to investigate further. If you print your images large on walls, this is only 30 inches wide, this image behind me here, you'll still see it, guys. You'll still see it. You'll need to use something like a canvas or a really heavy rag paper to be able to hide that error that is visible. And so what do we do? What do we do in this situation? We know the remove tool works well, the sparkly tool. It's amazing. It does a good job, but it leaves us with rubbish now and again. And so to fix this, the only way of accurately fixing it, especially in a higher noise image, is not to use the healing brush tool, which was always the go-to. Because since Photoshop did add this little present for us all, the other tools have gone to crap. For example, here, just replacing that section here has left us with this ring of rubbish. But now it's left us with this ring. So we don't have the fingerprint, which is still here, but we don't have a nice smooth transition because we have this ragged edge. And unfortunately, this is just one of those things. When Photoshop developers give us new things, they also take away things that were good or make them worse, as is true with select and mask, but we're not going to talk about that today. So fixing clone stamp. I know we don't use it, but we do now. You can use an amalgamation, a mixture of the healing brush tool and the clone stamp, which does work quite well. So do your healing brush tool and then clean up around the edge with the clone stamp, 100% well worth it. Or alternatively, you can just go ahead and straight clone stamp, as long as you have an accurate source to pull from. Utilizing this tool is something that's covered blooming everywhere on the internet, including in our resources. Um, but essentially, you would literally lay down brand new pixels here from absolute clone copies of the ones that are lower down. Um, and you would continue in that manner until the area is repaired. And in that way, you end up with a nice clean removal where the remove tool did make good life choices and then made bad ones. And hopefully that makes sense. And so when you finish doing your removals along all of that and cleaning up the fingerprints that are left everywhere, you'll probably end up with an image that might look something like this.